Okay, and we'll make a start. Um, so hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today for uh, the uh, Q&A session for BEAD in the um, question and answer room. And um, what a fantastic demo day we've had. Um, what a great effort by all of the startups today. And uh, I hope everyone really enjoyed the show. So this is the Q&A section. So this is the, the time where you get to ask questions to the founders, um, or you can just drop a comment in the chat um, along the side. Um, this is the opportunity that you have if you wanted to find out more information about their pitch. Um, this is where you get to ask it, but um, stuff that wasn't in their pitch. So if you want to know um, anything about their future plans, or if you want clarification on their business model, they go to market strategies or funding. Um, this is the platform for which to do it. Um, we also encourage you, like if you want to connect with uh, the startup afterwards, um, you can go to their profile page and click on the connect with startup button. Um, and then they'll be able to get back in contact with you in due time. So um, just a reminder, if you've got any questions, just click the Q&A box um, down, the, uh, down the bottom there. So we've got a couple of questions that have come in already. So first of all, um, uh, Sona, Hugo, thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much for the great uh, even today. Even it's virtual, so we really uh, enjoyed it. So looking forward for the questions. Awesome. So the first question to come in is, um, what is Bead's go-to-market strategy here in Australia? Um, so yeah, our go-to-market strategy is uh, mainly focused on uh, creating strategic partnerships. Um, and we're well on our way by uh, having joined the Startup Bootcamp program. We're really happy and excited about it uh, because that's one of the ways to uh, start nurturing and, and creating uh, additional relationships. Um, but we're hungry for more. So we're looking for companies in the energy, real estate and insurance spaces. Um, and those companies that see some value in our technology. And uh, we want to uh, bring uh, B to market um, with them together. So that's, uh, that's the short of the strategic uh, uh, approach that we have. Great, thanks very much for that, Hugo. Um, so the next question that's come in is, um, like, um, what do you think um, the building tech industry will look like after the COVID-19 crisis? Oh, I can get that. So I think it's especially uh, the shift between like the analog systems, like the traditional uh, work of uh, like the building systems or even the energy management system that will change. That is even right now changing a lot because before COVID or before that, that huge pandemic started, people were thinking and looking to digital technologies as a expensive and luxurious system. But right now we saw that if, if because you cannot enter the buildings or you cannot send, send someone on the buildings. And it makes it much more important right now to get a real time information about the, about from your real estate facilities. If you are a real estate investor or a company that is, uh, that owns like a couple of uh, those buildings, that is right, I think right, right now becoming an important issue to have a virtual system that you can work with and optimize your operations, optimize your work of doing and uh, maintaining the building and I think that will uh, that will change and those the whole business model will change after after we start our normal life so that is what we are also feeling and also we are getting a lot of feedback from our customers great thanks that beat so um, just a quick reminder everybody my name is Richard Tom I'm the executive program director at startup bootcamp I'm hosting this um, chat with uh, the founders here of uh, Bead Sona and Hugo, who's um, heads up their business op uh, business development operations here in Australia. Um, you can join the conversation by clicking the Q and A button down at the bottom of your screen and asking a question, or um, on the right hand side, if you click, um, you can click a message to any individual that's in the room, um, or if you change it to um, all panelists and attendees, um, you can um, speak to everybody. So the next question that comes in here is from, uh, from Rory and he's asking, can you expand on what you're doing in relations to uh, blockchain and smart contracts? Mm, that's a good question. So, and because I saw another question, what we do with insurance companies, so I can combine those two questions, especially uh, in, in the field of insurance companies, insurance carriers, uh, it's really important to understand how those buildings are used during the day and especially the buildings that they insure. And because the problem is, especially in their claims uh, process, they don't have enough information from those buildings. And what we are right now doing with smart contracts and blockchain is we are streaming the data from the buildings into smart contracts. 
so that every smart contract has a timestamped information about the building, about the occupancy information, about the occupancy patterns and indoor circumstances information. And then we are linking that smart contract information directly uh, to their claims department so that they have like a, a decentralized uh, a real-time information about what's going on in those buildings instead of sending someone on site and doing the audits. Uh, the whole process is taken from human-centric into, into digital platform and integrated with the smart contracts. And we already integrated that to for a couple of uh, insurance companies here in the US. And, and the future, I think, is will also be, uh, especially in the insurance uh, industry, we have these digital information say, from the buildings, from the facilities, and then using that in, in order to optimize their whole process in claims. So that is what we are right now doing with blockchain, smart contracts, and insurance. Great. Thanks very much for that, Sona. Um, so the next question that's come in is, um, what is the average installation cost for the big system in a building um, of, mm -hmm. say, um, 100,000 uh, square feet? And that's from um, Abhijek. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So the whole business model that we have is purely subscription models. So our customers don't need to, to pay like an upfront investment or they don't need an upfront investment uh, in their budget. So they either is subscribed for three years or five years. And the uh, the average size for, for a, a 100 square foot will be like just 10, 10 cents per square foot per month. So, and then they get the whole system. And we usually install like every 1,000 square foot one sensor, so that it means that makes like around 100 sensors will cover cover the whole building. And with just 10 cents per square foot, you will get the system up and running. Great, uh, thanks very much for that, uh, Bede. So the next question we've got that's come in is, um, what are some of the outcomes um, for your customers so far? Yeah, it is like we in, in our case, it is interesting that we got we started in like energy efficiency in business. So trying to reduce the energy waste, trying to optimize indoor climate levels. But right now, uh, our customers are using it in very different ways as well. Our system, especially for using for optimizing their operations, for optimizing their space usage, reducing their energy costs. And in, in recent like last week, we had a call with our customer that is using our system. They reduced their operational cost by 30% because right now they don't need to send someone on site. They, they can do it with the information that they get from uh, from, from the beach system. And uh, the average savings that they are, data are right now receiving is between 30 up to, even right now in, in, in some cases, even 40% if you combine the operational efficiency with the energy reduced wind and so on. And uh, the average return of investment is for our clients is right now between 12 up to 14 months. Great, uh, thanks very much for that. So um, just a reminder everybody, my name is Richard Som, I'm the Executive Program Director at Startup Bootcamp in Australia. Um, we're speaking to uh, co-founders uh, uh, Sona from Bede um, and also Business Development uh, um, Manager here in Australia, Hugo. Um, to ask a question, there's a Q&A uh, question box down at the bottom of your screen. Just click on that um, and you can type in a question um, or you can gauge through the uh, chat ch channel on the uh, right-hand side of your screen. So um, the next question we've got is, we heard some news about Bede working on technology to help keep people safe in buildings after we go back to work. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're actually very excited about that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we all have to work from home these days, but, uh, you know, um, part of the beat digital billing system has always been collecting information on human occupancy levels through our infrared sensors. And we're now working on developing this uh, further where uh, our new sensor is called Temp I um, will be able to measure uh, body temperatures of people that will enter a building. And so that's very interesting, right? Because then um, uh, if you see body temperature anomalies where people are maybe having a slight fever or are sick, um, there's, uh, there, there can be an alert and we can then uh, have somebody in the building take action. But we want to make sure that it's uh, not intrusive to people's privacy. Um, and I think the, this new technology is going to be very interesting and exciting. Uh, once uh, some of the lockdowns are lifted and people are allowed to uh, go back to their buildings. 
Great. Thanks very much for, um, for answering that. Got a uh, question that's come in from Andrew here. Do you, see for, uh, do you foresee any issues with privacy, i.e. due to monitoring of the employees in buildings? Oh, I can get that. So it is really a good question because especially in Europe, there are a lot of right now concerns and regulations not to use like any camera recognition systems or face recognition systems. In our case, we have the huge advantage that are uh, like the sensors that we have, you can see it here as well. Uh, we don't use any cameras or we don't use any uh, any face recognition system. It is just a, 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 a regular data that you get everywhere, like a temperature data, a humidity data, and a lighting level data that belongs to no one, and it is not tracking individuals in the building. Uh, that the algorithm that we develop and the signal processing that we develop in our system, it is basically not uh, targeting people individually, but more. Uh, uh, aggregating the data and making a, a meaning from the data and then using that information in order to understand how those occupancy flow direction is happening, how those usage trends are changing, how the human behavior regarding like occupied zones are changing. And that is, I think, also one of the reasons that our customers are more uh, open to use it. And uh, especially we had like a lot of meetings with their uh, compliance departments or legal departments and I think right now they are uh, more moving from using cameras or something like that into uh, into using uh, systems that, uh, that 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 beat is uh, offering to them and in that case we don't have any uh, issues uh, targeting privacy or privacy concerns great thanks very much for that Sona. Um so the next question I've got in here is what is um, your planned sales distribution model Hugo, you got it or? Um, yeah, I mean, so f for now, uh, while, we're, uh, while, we're, while we've gone through the program, uh, our planned uh, model is uh, really through the strategic partners that we're, uh, that we're hoping to uh, continue our relationships with. And um, so we're looking for, you know, an, any company that uh, sees value in BEAT and would wanna, would wanna put it on the market uh, together with us. And that's for now uh, the distribution model. Right. Thanks very much for that. Um, the next question that's come in is, um, what's the next best alternative a customer would uh, evaluate versus bead? In uh, that's a good question. Also, like in in, I think what we are right now doing is uh, because we are not like it is not like, like an energy management system. Because I see that one question is also focusing on it is like bead is giving the opportunity. For the for the building owners or for any any kind of application developer or companies that are developing new uh, technologies, especially focusing on real estate industry, uh, we are the uh, the only one company I think as so far uh, uh, that is focusing on human behavior, uh, because there are a lot of companies that are providing like energy management systems that are providing DMS systems and so on. And but all those systems they are focused on one kind of data and they are focused on just uh, giving a feedback about how those uh, like energy patterns are changing and as usage patterns are changing. And in our case, uh, we can provide much more deep dive information about what's going on throughout the building. So, uh, but always uh, focusing on like human behavior. So what affects those human behavior? Like whether is it the indoor circumstances, whether it is like the, the even, even the architectural design of the building that affects also because they, that is what we are giving. And that is what I think the biggest change uh, difference between building IQ or the other companies that are only giving n n reports or, or like notifications about uh, energy usage trends, but uh, missing the point that is like uh, that the human uh, should be in the in the middle. So I think that is the best. Uh, that is the most important outcome that we are giving, and also that is I think one of the most important feedbacks that we are getting from our customers. Yeah. Great, thanks for that, uh, Sona. I mean, Greg also asked, um, your offering looks very similar to building IQ, which you just spoke about, um, that I believe is publicly traded in Australia. We've examined how to differentiate your value pop um, uh, to secret source. So I don't mm -hmm. know if you've got anything else you wanted to add there, Sona. I think the best thing is the best, like the, the, the one sentence that I can get, give is that our system is uh, creating a digital, not a digital twin of the building or any twin. So it is basically creating that digital model 
of the life cycle of the building. So how those is changing and then integrating to different verticals. So in that case, even we can provide uh, information uh, to building IQs platform. So which we are working a lot of with in companies in US like Building IQ or like Lucid or Enlighted and so on. So that is, I think, the biggest difference that we are providing and the, the, the secret sauce that we are giving to our customers, but also partners as well. Great. Thanks very much for that. So just yeah. a reminder, everyone. Uh, sorry, Hugo, did you have something you wanted to add there? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, part of the secret sauce is also that we use AI and machine learning to uh, to optimize uh, the building operations. And, uh, you know, one, one of the real estate examples that I have and that I've heard is that, you know, we're, we're doing a pilot program with Hydra Tasmania and uh, they have a building in Tasmania that uh, they're not so sure uh, if they actually want to sell that building, if they want to uh, repurpose some floors. So by putting the bead sensors in there and, and tracking the human occupancy levels, then uh, that will help them make some, uh, you know, big dollar amount decisions. I think, uh, you know, that that's the application of uh, a, the data source company that we that we're looking to be. Great. Thanks very much for uh, adding that again, Hugo. So uh, just a reminder, everyone, my name is Richard Tom. I'm the Executive Program Director at Startup Bootcamp here in Australia. Um, you're in the BEAD uh, chat room. Uh, you can engage with uh, the co-founder of BEAD, uh, Sona, um, or um, Hugo, who uh, heads up uh, business development here in Australia, um, just by clicking the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen if you've got a question, or you can jump um, and um, join the chat along the, uh, along the side of the room. Um, so the next question that I've got um, here is um, what do you see as, and this is from Greg, what do you see as the chief constraints to converting customers to bead, um, like not counting funding? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the right now it was <clears throat> before all these COVID issues started, it was uh, basically people were thinking, I think, uh, uh, more as a beat as a system that will take over their jobs and also like that will uh, work against them, especially those guys that are working in technical departments or facilities management departments. Uh, but right now, I think uh, a lot of people see that uh, those technologies is not like taking over their job, but it's, it's more like taking over the the, the job that they that nobody is doing right now, nobody can do it right now. So and I think. Uh, therefore, it's like now all this um, mentality and engagement is changing right now. And uh, I think that is also what we are preparing us for right, right now. So after uh, the life returns into normal, so those uh, constra constraints will not be there as it was. But uh, right now, it was like, as I, I can only say that before COVID, it was more focusing on like the, the fear of AI, the fear of uh, all these machine learning. Cool. Um, thanks for that, Sona. We've got a question that's coming from Oscar. What's the number one short-term return you can offer to a building? Um, so uh, he's written a, a hotel, um, for example. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So we got some uh, pilot projects with some uh, hotel chains. And uh, I think the, the especially in, in the case of a use case in hotels, it is basically their, their biggest problems, what we saw and what they said to us, is like the area, the lobby. Uh, the conference rooms, the ballrooms, and the common areas, and restaurants, and so on. So even some of them, they would like to control the, the rooms as well, but they are more focused on those uh, common areas. And uh, in, in one case that we did is especially uh, giving them the information how that uh, the occupancy patterns are changing in that area. So you can have like a, a ballroom, a conference room, how that is used so that they can optimize uh, according to those usage trends, the, all these HVAC systems. Uh, but also right now, some of our uh, customers, they are using the same thing as developing new marketing strategies because they see which part of the hotel is trending. And according to that, they are like uh, trying to to, to create new uh, new new uh, marketing strategies to, for uh, offering their clients and so on, uh, but especially right now with the with the temp eye sensor that uh, Hugo was telling, we are uh, preparing those sensors for uh, for hotels as well because after all these COVID issues ends, I think the ones that can uh, provide their customers a safe environment will be the winners. So uh, and we are right now having a huge uh, request for that sensor. 
uh, especially tracking in the on the entrance in the lobby, tracking that human body temperature, and then in real time in analyzing if there is some anomalies and then triggering some alarms or notifications. Uh, that will be used a, a lot of in hospitality industry as well. So that was, I think, uh, most of the, uh, uh, the requests that are that we are getting from hospitality industry. Great. Uh, thanks for that, Sona. Um, so the next question that comes in is, um, does your technology apply to factories or only commercial buildings? So basically building on what you've just spoken about then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Sona highlighted a little bit already that, uh, you know, our technology is, uh, is uh, basically for commercial buildings and but also in industrial facilities. Uh, we're we're going to start a, a pilot uh, program with Asahi. Uh, one in their office, but the other one in their uh, bottling plant, where uh, apparently it's very uh, crucial to the production speed, uh, the temperature that uh, that is in the facility itself. Uh, so they see a very significant value there, um, and obviously, uh, you know, other other industrial uh, applications. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, with a car manufacturer that one example was that. Um, it's super important to when you paint cars that that happens at the correct temperature as well. So, you know, those are some of the applications that we, we've already um, uh, been lucky to uh, apply in, in different buildings other than commercial buildings. Cool. Great. Thanks for that, uh, Hugo. So the next question we've got is, um, um, does Bede integrate other utilities, so water flows or thermal monitoring uh, into the management mm -hmm. console? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, we are working uh, also like integrating uh, water flow and thermal monitoring to in our system. So we are also monitoring that, especially uh, we will start of, of course all after all these code issues and it's like uh, that will be like our first residential project in Manhattan and focusing on the water flow, but also leakage detection in, in residential buildings, which is really an important issue especially in residential uh, uh, sector and but also like that is somehow linked to insurance people as well uh, but right now we can even like do uh, like the remote water metering and water flow metering but also like uh, gas metering if there is uh, there is this uh, opportunity and there is this need especially for measuring uh, natural gas or water flow so that we can integrate especially for sustainability reporting we are doing it a lot with banks right now Great. Uh, thanks very much for uh, that answer. So just a reminder, no, everyone, we're in the... Uh, so you wanted to add something here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, to me, it's always uh, uh, good to be able to give some really great examples. And this is one of the examples how BEAD works in the insure tech industry. Uh, you know, we, we've had uh, meetings with insurance companies that were very interested in the, in the water flow uh, part because they had a new construction building that uh, somebody left water uh, open on uh, the 20th floor and this was flowing for the whole weekend. So oh, wow. they had like a huge claim uh, based on, uh, on the fact that somebody just, uh, for, you know, human failure, uh, but with a beat system that would uh, obviously, uh, we, we would have been able to avoid the claim uh, altogether. Yeah, yeah, thanks for, um, thanks for that, Hugo. So um, just a reminder, everyone, um, you're in the bead room, the Q&A after uh, the start of Bootcamp Demo Day. My name is Richard Selm. We're here with the co-founder of Bead uh, Sona um, and also uh, Hugo, who heads up uh, their business development operations here in Australia. Um, you can engage um, with Bead, ask questions just by question, uh, pushing the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen, um, or you can write um, anything you like in the uh, chat along the side. So uh, Hugo, you mentioned uh, uh, Asahi before. Um, this is a question from... Um, Anna, one of the execs at Asahi, who's uh, on the call at the moment. Um, have you seen any new ways that you could work with companies when they go back to work after these partial lockdowns reduce? Um, yeah, let me unmute. Anna, thank you. Uh, nice to meet you uh, virtually. <laughs> uh, the lockdowns be crazy. So, yeah, you know, virtual meetings, uh, th those schedules fill up as well. Um, yeah, we, we basically with the with the pilot programs that we've been working on, uh, it's really um, interesting that everybody's really willing to like go through all the paperwork, get all of that out of the way. Uh, you know, we, we obviously also have some uh, some problems with shipping and uh, that's all, uh, you know, not as smooth as it used to be. Um, so, yeah, what what we have with our pilot uh, partners is that we go through all the paperwork. 
uh, you know, scope of work, uh, the pilot program agreement, and uh, so that when buildings open back up, we'll be able to, uh, you know, install and flip the switch as soon as, as we can. So I think uh, it's great to have worked with some of the, the partners uh, from Startup Bootcamp that are really, were really fantastic on, on willing to uh, keep moving on that part so that when everybody goes back to work and now if we can add the temp eye sensor, uh, sensor uh, then uh, that'll add an extra layer of uh, security for people going back to work. Yeah, um, you mentioned that before, yeah. Hugo, but do you wanna just quickly um, just summarize that again for people that have uh, just joined the room recently? Just tell us a little bit more about the sensor. Ah, the, the Tempi sensor, yes. So uh, we've actually had this uh, on the shelf uh, and um, it was part of our infrared sensors where um, you know, we, we measure human occupancy levels in the spaces where the sensors are installed. Um, but now we're uh, developing it further where we doing the uh, measuring body temperatures of people entering the buildings. So we're basically um, at the entrance, there, there'll be a, uh, like a heat signature and we don't use uh, infrared cameras, but the sensor will, uh, will give the picture of the people entering the building. And then if there are any temperature anomalies, uh, we'll be able to um, uh, flag that and then the building uh, people or the security team can uh, take action. Uh, I think that um, you know, one, one thing that's very important is that it doesn't intrude on people's privacy. Um, so that, you know, people will still feel comfortable going to work and, uh, and, you know, you don't have to have your temperature measured when you enter the building. So that's, that's part of the, the advantages of the temp eye sensor. And I think, um, people will be more willing to, uh, go back to work uh, sooner rather than later, uh, when, when a building has this technology installed. Great. Thanks for that, Hugo. Um, so the next question that's come in is, um, do you have an interesting use case during COVID? Uh, yeah, I think we actually like we have a really good uh, use case which, which we recently worked on. So uh, that is one of our customers, and that can be also like an answer of uh, to Anna's question also like another another perspective as well. So they are uh, a, a, a discounter chain, like a grocery chain that has around 100 different locations, shops in 100 different locations, and they are using. They we started just before integrate, integrating beat just before COVID started. And right now, uh, in their case, they know exactly at what time the occupancy level is reaching its peak point, and in what, in which part of the of the shops that is reaching those peak point. And uh, with that information, instead of having uh, five or six employees at each shop, they are right now optimizing the full shifts. So instead of sending five people, they are sending two people, but they are sending those two people at the right moment where the peak peak. It, where the occupancy is picking up, uh, but also they have the second biggest uh, advantage that they they are right now aware of if there is an overcrowded situation in one of their shops, uh, they are just triggering and triggering a notification so that they can close it or they can uh, they can go uh, they can like reduce the risk because it is overcrowded, and uh, that is I think. Uh, that, of course, that was not intended to use in that way, but that is one of the really big outcomes that we achieved in co during COVID. Uh, but another interesting uh, information is that the same company, the same customer, is using the that information, and they are they because you know like especially companies like uh, Asahi's and like those bigger companies, they have they also have really big insurance costs as well. And that company is right now using that information like our technology and they are speaking with their insurance carrier in order to reduce their premiums. So because they will say that, okay, we are reducing our risk because we know exactly how the, how the crowd is, uh, is behaving inside our shop so that they, are, they will get a discount in their, uh, in their monthly fees and so on. So that is a really interesting outcome and another way that uh, one of our customers is using it. I think that will also be used in the future as well after people go back to their office and those offices that have these kind of futures uh, will be more most probably will be charging more or will have like a, this new kind of certification that is like a healthy building but healthy in a way that is monitoring the building so uh, that was a really interesting outcome and i think that will be the case in our uh, other other customers as well great uh, thanks that sona um, just a reminder, everyone, you're uh, in the bead Q&A session um, as part of the Start 
startup bootcamp room. Um, you're in here speaking to the CEO Sona and also Hugo. Um, and uh, if you've got a question you want to engage, just push the Q and A button down at the bottom of the screen. Um, and if you uh, if you uh, want to talk, you can speak um, along the side as well. Um, so the next question that come in is what is your main differentiator of your competitors i know we've spoken about this before but um a new question just for people that are joining us now oh yeah sure so i think uh i will just start and move uh, give it to hugo as well so uh, i will just say that because in our case we are uh, we are not a bms company we are not like a company that is creating new smart building technologies it is a technology that is working on top of those existing systems and and i think the biggest value that we are bringing to our customer is the information about how how the how their buildings how their shops how their uh, uh facilities are used during the day so with that information they can optimize not only like their energy costs but also like they can use it as hugo said for optimizing their space usage uh, they can they can they can use it even to to engage with their tenants or with their employees so that they can provide them a comfortable uh, and quality work environment or, or to their customers if they have a shop or shopping mall. I think the biggest, uh, the, the most important thing that we bring uh, is like the, the, the analysis of human behavior and creating that digital model and then integrating to really different verticals, not only providing one kind of solution, but one solution that they can be used in different verticals in that case. Yeah, and if, and if I may add a little bit to that is, uh, you know, uh, obviously for the purpose of the demo day, we had to adjust our pitch a little bit, but when we do a pitch to potential partners or customers, uh, that will also show, for example, other differentiators that we have. One of them is uh, smart contracts and blockchain, which uh, I don't think uh, a lot of other companies are doing. And then, um, you know, obviously the, the AI machine learning is also something that uh, can optimize uh, efficiencies of the system. One thing that uh, I hear a lot, a lot of questions I got was that um, retrofitting buildings, if that's uh, possible with, uh, with BEADS technology. And the answer to that is absolutely, <clears throat> because we can um, also control um, older uh, systems uh, within certain restrictions. Um, but you know, we, the BEAT system is not replacing a, a building management system. It's basically enhancing the, the system and optimizing it. So I think that those are uh, very significant uh, differentiators uh, with our competition. Yeah, I... Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just wanna add, that is a really important thing that Hugo mentioned. For example, in the very same customer that we have at the supermarket chain, we are also controlling their, controlling their uh, beverage fridges. So that's interesting because uh, especially those like, it's, it's also the case in hospitality groups, restaurants, and these kind of grocery stores, their biggest pain is those fridges uh, because they are running all the time and they are running on 100% capacity. And with our system, we integrated those fridges to our system so that those fridges are only working if the occupancy level reaches some point and or if the indoor level is uh, is reaching reaching some uh, like a uh, top level so that it is starting working and after that uh, pattern is done so it starts it closes the fridge so in that case we are uh, really creating a like that uh, uh, like uh, these uh, integrating those third party uh, devices also to our system so that they can be a part of the uh, real time information system Great, thanks for that, Sana. Um, we're moving in um, to the last uh, last few questions of the um, session here. So if anyone still has a question that's joined us uh, in the Bean Root, uh, just push the button down to the bottom of your screen. There's a Q&A question um, button. Um, you can click there and type out a question and uh, your question will be asked up on the screen. Um, we're speaking to the uh, co-founders of uh, a Bead Sona, um, who's the CEO, and also um, Hugo, who's the um, um, who heads up our, our business development uh, here in a here in Australia. Um, a quick question for you, Hugo, that's come in. Uh, like, what was your accelerator experience like? How did you enjoy the program? Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is uh, an awesome question because uh, I have to tell you that number one, uh, we've, we've had some experience with uh, other accelerators and other programs and, uh, you know, 
we, we really are super happy and pleased with Startup Bootcamp, especially the team in Australia. It was really awesome. Uh, everybody was willing to help with whatever we needed. And uh, it was, we made it very clear from the beginning what our goals were in Australia. And I think that everybody was uh, on the same page about that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, it was uh, tough for me to have to leave, but uh, otherwise I would have uh, been stuck in Australia probably for three to six months, which wouldn't, which wouldn't have been a bad thing, but you know, I had to do that all as well. Um, but yeah, we were very happy with uh, with Startup Bootcamp, and uh, it was great to uh, be part of the part of the program. Um, you know, having said that, we don't look at it as a, as a three month program or thir thirteen weeks, whatever. We we look at it as building uh, long term relationships. And like I said, you know, our goals for uh, Australia is really to uh, create strategic partnerships, long term relationships and then uh, get to market quickly. And then uh, also sign as many commercial agreements as we can handle uh, so that we can uh, grow fast in the Australian market. Yeah, and you've uh, made some great connections there with Energy Australia, um, yeah. with, uh, um, with Asahi as well. So that's um, it's really exciting. And I, I think the, um, the sense that you spoke about before the, um, that can um, certainly help with uh, COVID-19 as people come back to work is gonna be, uh, um, gonna be another really interesting project as well. Um, so the next question that's come in is from Mohan. He's um, he's asked, is the bead um, is bead suitable for small, medium retail stores um, and restaurants, or is it only suitable for sort of large, larger uh, buildings with BMSs? Yeah, actually, that is also like a good question because the answer is yes, we are suitable because uh, we did those, those kind of projects as well, especially for small, uh, medium sized. Uh, retailers or restaurants or as I said, or even grocery stores because those locations, they don't have these BMS systems, HVAC systems or building automation system. They have, they just have like an old kind of AC that is running in certain part of the location. And in, in that case, for example, we also can control and integrate these old kind of domestic ACs in our system so that we can control them. And, but also like if they have like a lighting system, which they can, which, which we can integrate as well. And uh, that makes it because our, the reason why we can do it very easily is first of all, it is battery operated, it's really easy to integrate, uh, but it's also like very affordable so that they don't need these huge investment budgets, which like these bigger uh, corporates have. Uh, it's really like a, like a leasing model that they can get. And, uh, and yes, the answer is yes, we can, uh, also work on really domestic kind of ACs or or inf systems that are that are used in small medium sized uh, locations. Great, um, thanks for that, uh, Sona. Um, so another question that's come in is um, like uh, as your startup um, starts to scale, and um, what additional areas might you be able to expand into? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a really good question because that is also like uh, a question that. Uh, uh, that I can really um, uh, announce here because uh, we started in energy efficiency vertical, which was really important for us, reducing energy waste and optimizing uh, carbon footprint and uh, and uh, these kind of important is issues. But after installing like close to 4,000 sensors in over tw close to 200 buildings, we saw that the data is right now becoming really important for companies or for our partners as well. And right before uh, the demo day like it started, we had uh, two meetings with uh, one with Mitsubishi and the other one with Fujitsu in Japan. So, uh, and the, the, the reason why we have is right now they are, they are needing information from those buildings, especially to develop new smart city applications like for urban transportation, for, uh, uh, for especially municipalities, for, uh, for the buildings and so on. So uh, that is also why we are right now positioning BEAT uh, not only like as an energy management tool or energy efficiency tool, but more as a, as a, as a technology that is sitting right in the middle and providing real-time uh, data source for these different kind of applications, but also verticals. So in that case, our goal is to be to position ourselves as a as a as a data source company from buildings, and that is creating those informations for other applications. Great, uh, thanks for that, Sona. Um, so you, uh, everyone that's come and joined us, thanks uh, very much. We mm -hmm. can see Douglas, who's uh, 
who's in here from last year's program. Great to see you, Doug, in the room today. Um, we've got um, we've got time for a few more questions. So um, if you want to press the uh, Q and A button at, down at the bottom of your screen um, and just type in your questions, we'll make sure that. Uh, um, that the boys here, uh, Sonar, the CEO, and uh, Hugo, who heads up business development here in, a, in Australia, is, um, um, answers those questions. Um, so about, about 10 more minutes to go. Um, so actually, Doug's um, typed and uh, asked a question. What are the next steps for Bede in Australia? Um, any plans to incorporate the company here or um, to explore the local market? So Sana is uh, is basically uh, you know the guy that makes those kind of <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no you know if, if me, you know I was I was super impressed as soon as I arrived we had a few meetings we did a few pitches and we actually got a potential customer with a pilot program that <clears throat> was a humongous developer uh, in Melbourne and I actually saw their name on a big crane. And, uh, you know, they, they wanted to uh, pilot our uh, technology and uh, he had um, other uh, companies that he worked with, with a, a million square meter of office space. So the opportunities are there. Uh, I think continue with the pilot programs that we have. And uh, yeah, I, I will be very excited to, if we can uh, continue in, uh, in Melbourne and then uh, expand uh, further into Australia. I, I, anything to add to that, uh, Sana? Yeah, I think uh, I will just add a couple of uh, uh, remarks because as Hugo said in the beginning, we are not here just, that's also one of the reasons why we choose why do we uh, start a bootcamp. It is not like a program focused on like, okay, pitching, but more focused on developing partnerships. And, and that is also our goal. And to be, uh, to be here on a long term, uh, to develop long term partnerships, and not only with uh, like with companies, but also uh, with universities, for example, that is also one of our, uh, I think uh, this is one of, one of our models as well. We are really looking for partnering with universities, with students from universities, having a long-term internship, opening those kind of uh, information. And especially for, for, the, for the departments in universities that, that, want, uh, that are looking for data sets and developing new AI technologies. And that is, uh, also one of our goals as well to uh, to work with uh, with those students in in universities throughout the Australia's uh, Melbourne and uh, that does uh, that also shows us our uh, excitement in the market as well to be there as a long term uh, company yeah you guys are uh, playing it very safe there um I think one of the uh, the conversations that you've had and the the uh, interest that, the, that that's been here I think it's that's uh um, it's almost a given that uh, you know that um, you'll start to see bead logos and bead staff running around, uh, running around the city of Melbourne, and then pretty pretty soon in uh, in other cities around Australia. So stop being so modest. Um, <laughs> so uh, next question that's come in from Chris is, uh, how do you stay one step ahead of your competitors? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So uh, I will start and then give it to Hugo as well. So. Especially in our case, I think we have the uh, uh, the biggest advantage that our mice for before before we started beat. I worked over twelve years in Siemens building technologies, and like I was responsible for emerging markets, Germany and so on. And uh, I think what we uh, have in common in our team is that this experience in the real estate industry, not only as being a software company but also being a, a hardware plus software company because we are not, for example, buying our sensors or our gateway from third party vendors. We are producing it. We are manufacturing the sensors. We are developing the electronic boats, the embedded systems. And it is like a solution from top to end, like from hardware into software. And uh, in order to do that, you need to understand the dynamics in those real estate. It's not only like having a SaaS uh, platform or having a software only platform, but uh, knowing how those dynamics start changing. Our, like our CTO has this uh, PhD degree in autonomous controlling systems. So he, was been work he has been working in, in, in sensor technologies for over 10 years. So I think all this, uh, all this combined information, but also uh, our advisory board, uh, which which has like uh, really like experienced executive from uh, different verticals, helps us also to stay ahead uh, and also to see 
uh, what is going on and how the market is developing uh, as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, so, and I, I, think, I think I can add to that. Uh, sorry, Rich. Um, I think I can add to that that, uh, yes, it's, it's not software. It's not only hardware. Uh, it's machine learning. It's AI. Uh, but also, I think the biggest strength is really you know, the team and uh, the forward thinking uh, of Sonar and Hay and uh, being able to uh, go into new markets and, and make it happen there as well. And then at the same time also anticipating uh, some things and with a little bit of luck, you know, already having a temperature sensor on, on the shelf is great, but uh, you know, they got on it right away and said uh, when this crisis uh, developed and said, okay, we, we need to develop what we already have. And uh, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, really key to staying ahead of some other competition for sure. Great. Uh, yeah. Thanks for adding that, Hugo. So um, we've come to, uh, we've actually gone a little bit over time. So if there aren't any final questions, this is your last sort of chance. If you want to um, push the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen uh, and ask your final questions, if there's no uh, final questions from anyone in the room here. I might just throw over to, uh, to the guys just to um, do a quick sum up. Are you going to sum up or we're going to sum up? You're going to sum up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the, I think for me, the last uh, the last thing that I, I want to throw out there is that uh, we've been very impressed with Starter Bootcamp. We thank uh, you guys for all the support. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're looking uh, for strategic partners and um, then uh, turn that into commercial contracts. One of the things that... Um, is really exciting is that uh, you guys have uh, so graciously offered for all of us to return in a couple of months when this craziness has subsided. And so, um, you know, I think it'll be great to uh, meet with everybody again and then uh, be able to report on a whole bunch of pilot programs that have, uh, you know, uh, uh, resulted in some, uh, some good actionable data. And, uh, you know, I'll be happy to be back and uh, turn some of those pilot programs into uh, commercial agreements. That's my wrap up. Anything <laughs> else to add, Sana? Yeah. Uh, first of all, like really a big, big applause and thanks to the cool startup bootcamp te team, uh, because I know it's really not easy to create these virtual events. Uh, even like it, it is right now, even like some of our customers, they are they have big difficulties to a virtual meeting and not say that it's demo day. So really, that is big. But also, I would like to add. I think it is. We are living in those times that uh, we were always saying that don't think buildings as a concrete structure. So we were saying that uh, we published that in three, for two years in a conference in, in Frankfurt and so on. At that time, people were thinking like it is more like a vision. It's not like a tangible thing. But right now, I think everyone understands that those buildings are really a part of our lives. And right now, even we are spending a nearly 100% of our lives inside buildings. And even next generation is, uh, is, 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 is thinking about like to becoming an indoor generation. So that makes it much more important to understand how those buildings are and how, they, how, how to make them a part in our daily life. And we are here uh, to create those environments for our channel partners, for partners, for customers, and be there and stay with them instead of like uh, selling them and moving forward, but more stay with the customers. So. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yeah, and um, I mean, Hugo, you, you sort of said um, you're looking forward to coming back, but the uh, the great news is that people don't have to wait that long. They can go to your profile page um, on the Demo Day website. There's a click with uh, connect with startup button um, that's there. Um, you've been throwing out your uh, email addresses. In fact, they're hovering in mid space behind your heads right now. Um, so people can get in contact with you. Um, as you said before, um, you're looking for those commercial, commercial arrangements. Um, looking for those pilots with people so they can get in contact with you right now and um, and you can start uh, start working with uh, with feed um, with their sensors um, some really exciting stuff they're doing um, around covid uh, covid 19 and heat detection as well um, so with that um, we're going to wrap up this live se session um, thanks very much for joining us um, today at startup bootcamps live demo day and um, we look forward to speaking to you all soon um, but uh, in the meantime that's uh, goodbye for me and goodbye from uh, from everyone here at Startup Bootcamp. Goodbye and stay safe. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining.